from the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. All right, can I just get on my high horse about something? Why do all shock mounts look so freaking ugly? Why are shock mounts to this day still so stupid looking? You know, I mean, this is a standard shock mount for like a U87 or really any kind of mic that has this kind of profile, right? Like something like this, right? This shock mount. You know what this is? This looks functional. It doesn't look attractive. I'm actually bored with the shock mounts that look like this, right? There's so many of them look like this. All right? You got this eight point of suspension of the cage, right? Basket, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it a cage. So you got eight points, right? From the one elastic that goes across all four. You have like, look at that. I mean, you have minimum density of material. The whole point is to kill the vibrations that before they hit your mic. That's why I've been designing shock mounts. I don't want to design shock mounts. It's not something I want to do. I find it a functional necessity because I'm so tired of all the shock mounts out there. So I designed a couple of shock mounts. Let me, this obviously, obviously is one of the ones I designed, obviously, right? So here, let me just show this to you right here. Let me just here. All right. So this is the cage is actually previous 3D printed prototype of it. So this is the idea, right? Look at that. Look how cool that looks. How hard is that? I know nothing about design. I know nothing about, <laughs> I know some physics, but that's it. Armed with a thimble full of physics. Look at that. Look at this. I mean, that looks cool, right? <laughs> I mean, not to break my arm patting myself on the back, but look, what would you rather have? This or that, right? So this is for like a TLM 102, TLM 103 sized mic. But the basic idea, look, look at that. So here, look, let me, let me just show you here. So just kind of, they have like little, <laughs> these have little sleeves on them so I can color code them so I better know what they are. Um, so look, look at that. So, and see, look at that. That's the way it's supposed to be. But let me just actually just show you why. This is a good shock mount. Here, let me just demonstrate this for you. Hold on. Watch this. See? Hear that? Nothing. I'm tapping hard too. Nothing. Everybody hit. Nothing on my desk. It's because this works really well. <laughs> and let me show you why. This is the problem. Look, shock mount, all these shock mounts, right? If you have these shock mounts, right? They grip the mic. So it's better for... When you grip the body of the mic, it's better to uh, to dissipate the infrasonic vibrations that may run up and down the body of the mic. That's the thing. Infrasonic vibrations can influence your sound. A lot of people don't make cool shock mounts, but let me just show you why. I'm looking at shock mounts. I'm like, I can do better. <laughs> let me just show you this one. So it's easy, right? Easy. Density of material is what helps dissipate vibratory energy so we have a big backbone a big spine big fat spine on here right and then we cantilever the little arms that hold them right so these are all cantilevered in and then using a little using a tip that i learned in eighth grade art during the week that we did french architecture gothic architecture one week of, of architecture <laughs> in the eighth grade in art class. <laughs> this is sixth grade. It doesn't matter. And I learned what a flying buttress is. And I thought it was hilarious at the time. But I realized there were important structural devices for taking the, uh, for bearing load. All right. So what I did was I threw in a flying buttress here between these, between the arched cantilevered arms. So here's a flying buttress that comes in. And this is why this works. This is why, right? I can tap on this thing and you hear nothing. Okay? Because we have the any sort of vibratory energy, right? That makes it beyond the, uh, right? So here you've got the thing. So you've got elastic, eight points of elastic, which attach into here, like so, like so. <laughs> any sort of vibratory energy that makes it to here, right? So first we have the density of this thing right here, right? Notice the difference? I'm all over the place in this today, but look, 
It's right here. It's right here. There's no density right here. This is the point at which the transfer occurs from here to here, right? So any point of connection, you have vibratory transfer possibility. So here, right? This one, this one, the little arm here is too long. Um, but, right? So first we have a chunk of, of density right here to help dissipate that. And then we have the two arms that come down, right? Instead of just one single, one single arm in which you have these offshoot legs, right? So all the vibratory energy goes from here to here, to here, 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 right? So here, we go here, and then here, and then it splits off, right? And then you have this structural element here to make sure this doesn't fall apart. And then we transfer it to here. And then you have this thing, right, to help dissipate that. And then you have that. And then any sort of vibrations that make it here, we're going to get them dissipating down here through the flying buttress. Gothic architecture, baby. So why, <laughs> if an idiot like me can design a uh, shock mount, I'm hitting it again, see? Right? I have to hit it real hard. But any, if an idiot like myself can design a shock mount, why can't the people who design shock mounts make shock mounts? Why can't they design them to look cool? I think this looks cool, right? The one that I designed for the Oma microphone that you've seen, right? I think it looks pretty cool. How hard is that? If I can do it, why can't they do it, right? The Studio Project C1 used to have a really cool shock mount. Pretty neat. But, uh, you know, hey, that was it, right? And I don't know really how good this shock mount was, but it looked cool. So overall, I'm not really, you know, not really pleased with the shock mounts I see out there. What I see actually are really more of the, um, more of the companies that are making, uh, I don't want to say non-traditional microphones, but the, uh, <laughs> the companies that are trying to break into the, the microphone market. Right, look, this this is the bifaly one shock mount, right, for the V10, and um, it looks cool. It looks cooler, right? Not bad, but it's just I don't know. It doesn't really feel very sturdy. Um, but this, like, look at that. Look how sturdy that is. And again, eight points, eight points, eight points of connection of suspension to the cage, and they're engineered so that the eight points all will transfer vibration back into the spine or through the flying buttress. Again, if I can do this, why can't they? Um, why are shock mounts so ugly? You know why? It's because manufacturers are freaking lazy. They don't think it's important. But the companies, the upstarts, the ones that are trying to break into the market, they realize that a shock mount design is kind of a, a not a crucial element but an element of the uh, entire package that can enhance the overall uh, aesthetic nature of what you're buying. That sounds like a bunch of bullshit, but it's true. I mean, look, this is the, this is the a bunch of bifaly mics here on the side here. So this is the uh, shock mount for the V5. Looks very much like the Lewitt shock mount, right? So same thing, right? It's not exactly ugly, but it's not exactly really pretty either. It looks kind of, I don't know, it looks very 90s-ish. <laughs> it doesn't look like the future to me. This looks like the future. Screw these shock mounts. Screw all of you. Screw all of you stupid shock mounts. This one, this one I just hate now. <laughs> this one I just hate. And then you've got these little cheapy ones. These are, these You can buy these for like, two dollars on aliexpress i bought two of them just so i could cannibalize uh this part off of it or the <laughs> i took it just so i could cannibalize this part off it because i don't want to print that um but yeah why are shock mounts so ugly someone tell me please someone tell me why they can't make cool shock mounts why do i have to make my own i don't mind making my own but why do i have to make my own manufacturers make cooler shock mounts please and for, there's some mics where they don't even actually bother to make a cool shock mount. Like the Jay-Z mics. 
They make a couple of cool looking shock mounts, but they're, they're weird looking, honestly. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm going off on a shock mount rant. What do you think? What do you think? I mean, come on. Tell me, tell me that doesn't look cool. Tell me it doesn't look cool. Right? Shock mounts. What are your feelings on shock mounts? <laughs> Leave a comment. All right, I spent 10 minutes talking about shock mounts. It's a slow Sunday. <laughs> All right, until next time. This is Mark Yoshimoto and MCOF. Ranting about shock mounts. <laughs> Fading to black. <laughs>